Today we're going to be fitting a set of gauges onto the Subaru. If you've been watching our videos already, you know that we drift a Subaru, which apparently you're not able to do. But we have this Subaru, which is a two and a half litre engine. It's got a turbo, it's got lots of engine and exhaust modifications on it, but it runs hot. Uh, and one of the things we've been doing is putting extra gauges on so that we can keep the car alive. Um, we got an email from Camus. They make... Um, What's quite an unusual thing, they make a, a round LCD gauge which connects to an OBD adapter. This kit will plug straight in under the dashboard into a standard OBD connector and it has a remote control and an adapter that lets you pick from any of the sensors which are on your standard OBD port. Right now we're using this little Bluetooth OBD connector plug and this goes into the socket underneath and connects to this, which is an Android aftermarket head unit. What we want to do now is add a dedicated separate gauge, which is what the Camus one is gonna allow us to do. Now I don't know whether it's pronounced Camus or Camus, but I'm gonna call it Camus from now on. It's actually really nice because it looks like an iPod, uh, you know, like you would get from a from an Apple box, you know, a nice white stylish box. I think that's definitely what they're going for. Unpack this to get to the gauge itself which has got a sticky backing on it. You can either have it on top of your dashboard or you can fit it in a slung position. Now this is the one that I actually like the look of is this sort of stealth position because trying to put it on the dashboard you'd have to find a home for it among the other gauges and sensors and stuff. So I think we'll end up putting it up here. I think that's gonna look sweet. To fit it, all we're gonna have to do is get underneath the steering wheel and find our OBD plug. Yours might be underneath the handbrake. Sometimes it's beneath the gear lever. Now you'll see from our car, we don't have an awful lot of interior trim left because this is a track car with extra things ripped out. So I'm gonna plug this in, power up the gauge, and then see if I can set it up with the remote control. This will be a piece of cake to fit because it's just a single OBD connector and then there's a USB-C connector. You can chain several of these together. That would be something I'd like to see because then you can have a different sensor configured on each one of them. Uh, but for us, we're just going to quickly connect this in. There is almost two meters of cable so you'd be able to route this in multiple positions through the car. I think we're going to set up to have it on the roof here. I'm going to plug this into the back here in one of my I.O. connectors. This is so that you can then chain several of them together. Here is the OBD connector. Technically it's an OBD too. Well, I'm gonna just plug that in. I beeped. You hear the beep? Get my uh, protective cover off. And then I'm gonna turn on my engine. Very important to remove the battery tab. <laughs> Set up. Oh, and it's got we like this, we like up, down, left, right, and an okay. We like to have a traditional cross control on our, on our, uh, on our controls here. So let's have system, brightness. I think we will stick with auto brightness. Now reverse, I think that is so that we can mount this upside down. Yes it is. Rotate that please David, thank you very much. That was easy to find. Oh yeah. Right. This is gauge number one of one, so we just keep that there. And we don't need to do any software upgrades at the moment, so let me go back out of here. Oh, racing mode, we need that. Hey, is that a... Yeah, is that a, a, like a start-stop time? Yeah. So it must read the speed sense well, of the engine? Yeah, of the... Oh, okay, cool, I like that. Dash, double. Now this is so... Let me just go back to the main screen. So. At the moment it's showing water temperature on the big gauge and it's showing exhaust temperature on the small gauge. Now this car is a 2007 model so it doesn't have an exhaust temperature gauge of its own. The up parameter is currently water, I'm happy with that. Oh that's cool. Ah. So it's highlighting sensors that I have an option of. So let me set the tackle gauge. And you can see it's now reading. Let me see what else we've got on here Dave. Turbo is likely to be boost. There it is, we're at negative boost. I won't hit my launch control on your driveway, David. What I want here is intake air temperature. And on the top, I want water temperature. Ah, that's cool. Set an alarm for 110 degrees. Intake temperature on the other hand, we don't really need an alarm for that. But it's good to know that we can do it. 
The reason we're interested in the temperatures is because of how hot the engine bay gets on your car after you've tuned and modified it. Out of the factory it had about 220 horsepower and it run, now runs 350 horsepower. So down both sides of the engine bay there, you can see me feeling it, um, it's almost too hot to touch. Now we came in after our new temperature gauge showed us 105 degrees and we thought we'd come in and check out where the engine is getting hottest. So you can see right in the centre there the alternator is very hot, down both sides we've got heat coming out of the exhaust headers, the intake pipe itself is that cool shape in the bottom left, but the coolant reservoir immediately above it is still showing yellow, it's very hot. What we don't want is for the car to overheat the oil or the water and result in engine failure. So we can peel that off there. And I'm going to have it just in front of my mirror here. Okay, so I'll have that glued to the screen there. Can't see reflections. Wow, that's solid already. That's the installation done. Uh, what I'll do is I'll show you how neat it is. The sensor box is actually tucked down the back of that, and then a single cable tie holds it in place. And all the rest of the cables are snug inside. The headlining. Now David, the next thing I think we should do is go and test this in anger. Because there's a couple of videos in circulation already, but no one's taken it to the track. And that seems like the kind of thing that we should do. We've done the same as before, we've come in when the water alarm goes off on the new gauge and we've discovered it's even hotter than it was before. So we'll allow the car to have a rest, run the fans, take a break before we go out and start drifting again. I love this gauge already, especially the alarm feature, I think it's brilliant. Uh, I can also definitely recommend having the gauge mounted high up, it's far easier for you to see. There are cheaper gauges if you only need a temperature display, but this one allows you to choose a whole bunch of sensors to show and you don't need any additional wiring. There's nothing in the engine bay, no electrical skills needed, it's just one OBD connector. All I need now is another four gauges to go alongside this one. I'd like to say a big thank you to the Wind Booster and Canis team for sending this kit all the way across the world for us to review. If you guys want to find out some more, check out their website in the link below.